Guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about new arrivals from Imprint and ViaVision. Now, ViaVision is the parent company of Imprint. Imprint is their high-prestige movie label. Uh, we're talking about numbers 132 through 137 of Imprint. These are the June releases, sort of a historical epic uh, month. Sort of a theme was big historical epics. Um, we've talked about every single imprint title to date. Uh, you can see on these very distressed heavy shelves that we've talked about all 137 uh, imprint releases to date. Put a star by that. I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and I'm so happy that we've, I, I love imprint. I've been here since the beginning, been reviewing them since the beginning. I will link to my complete imprint coverage playlist in the description of this video. And I'll also maybe I'll pop it up right here too. All right, let's dive right in. 132, uh, imprint release number 132 from 1961 is Barabbas. Anthony Quinn, Ernest Borgnine, uh, Jack Palance. This is a 1961, um, it's a biblical epic. Again, coming out of that huge 50s, that era of big biblical epics. It's produced by Dino De Laurentiis. Um, big movie, big production values, big themes, uh, big running time, two hours and 17 minutes. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold up the slip cover. I'll show you the reverse. Of the, here, I'll even hold it up if you want to freeze frame that too. Uh, I'm not going to be reading everything here. I'll let you read it for yourself. The actual Blu-ray case art is right here. And I will show you the disc itself and the interior artwork. Now, these slip covers, these of course are the limited edition versions. That's what Imprint always releases first. Once the limited edition versions are gone, some of the some of the the Blu-rays do come back in print, but if you're really concerned, you know, if you want these collectible, the very nice slip covers, if you want the slip covers, they're limited to 1500 units. And uh, people ask me sometimes they're like, "Where do you recommend that I buy Imprint?" I always recommend you buy them directly from ViaVision because you're going to get the best customer service. You're going to get the best, uh, I mean, you're buying directly from the source, right? You're supporting the source. If you don't want to do that, uh, JB Hi-Fi is an alternative. If you're in the US, by the way, if you do order from ViaVision.com.au uh, um, or JB Hi-Fi, remember those prices are Australian dollars. So many Americans go to these sites and they go, wait a minute, what? That's Australian dollars. Convert to your currency. Uh, if you're in America, I recommend deepdiscount.com. They have been great about stocking imprint. Sometimes Amazon does, but a lot of times those are through third-party sellers. Not always, a lot of times through third-party sellers and they're charging more than they should. Um, always directly from ViaVision is probably the best. However, uh, Diabolic DVD was doing, they've been doing imprint for a couple of years now and they have just announced that they're no longer taking pre-orders for, uh, for imprint titles. I don't know why, but that no longer seems like the best option for getting imprint titles. So those are my recommendations. And as I should also say, everything we're talking about here play perfectly fine in my region A locked player, even the TV on disc that we're gonna talk about. Um, I say played perfectly fine on my region A locked player because I can't speak for yours. All players are not created equally. Some people have players from like 2005, you know, if you're watching a Blu-ray from 2000, when did Blu-ray start, 2006? If you're watching a Blu-ray, you know, on a player from over a decade ago, I, I don't know. I don't know. But on mine, they play perfectly fine. So uh, that's Barabbas. Let's move on to uh, number 133, which is Julius William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar with Charlton Heston. Uh, great cast on this. Epic, epic cast, actually. Charlton Heston, Jason Robards, John Gilgood, uh, Richard Johnson, Robert Vaughn, Richard Chamberlain, Diana Rigg. Rest in peace, Diana Rigg. She, it feels like it was just last week that we lost Diana Rigg, but I guess it's been about six or seven months, maybe? Maybe longer than that. Uh, Jill Bennett is in this as well. Here's the front of the slipcover. Here is the back of the slipcover. I will show you the interior art. If you want to freeze frame that so you can read everything, please do. You see there's a lot of new features here. A lot of great stuff here. It's several 2022, 2022 commentary. Uh, critic uh, Matthew Sweet talking about the movie, author Neil Senor talking about the movie, and uh, Etu Berger interview feature with the original production crew. Like, all this is brand new stuff. I'll show you the inside here. And we will move on to our next installment here, which is The Nelson Affair. Uh, this is Glenda Jackson, Peter Finch, 1973. Um, Hal B. Wallace, 
uh, produced this. Who directed this? Directed by James Kellen Jones. Uh, all right, here's the front of the slipcover. Here's the Blu-ray cover art. And here is the inside. Top-notch presentation, as always. We've got a lot. Hopefully you saw it and you freeze-framed. Froze-framed? <laughs> Hopefully you saw all the extras that are included. I mean, this is just lots and lots of stuff. Imprint always brings... I mean, like, okay, I'm going to editorialize a minute. I, I was trying not to do this because I wanted to show it. Um, Imprint is like the, the, the level of attention they're bringing to this is criterion or better. I mean, you're getting often, not always new transfers. Uh, sometimes you get new transfers, but then like tons of new special features. And they're not like, I saw a movie called A Night to Remember when I was 12 years old and it was very good. It's not like that. It's like legitimately scholarly approach um, extras here. And I really appreciate that. They're really digging to the next layer. For, it's the, the thing that I think about Imprint is that these are for the... Here, I'll turn this around. These are for the uh, the discerning movie fan, maybe the movie fan that really... Enjoy, I mean, you don't have to watch the special features, but if you want to, they're all there and they're all very, very substantial. And I really appreciate that. I mean, sometimes we get alternate cuts, we get box sets, we get new commentaries, we get uh, video essays. It's some, they even in the box sets they've started doing booklets, uh, like the 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 neo noir collection one, which is missing from the shelf here because I'm it's by the TV right now. Uh, excellent booklet of essays in that collection as well. I love that stuff. As, as someone who writes reviews, I love an essay. Go figure. Who to thunk? Uh, Damn the Defiant. This is number 136. Uh, Alec Guinness is in this. Who? Dirk Bogard, Anthony Quayle. Um, some of these movies are just completely off the radar now. I don't hear anybody talking about these movies. These movies are really... It's another thing that I like about imprints is they're not always... They're, in fact, they're rarely obvious picks. They're kind of... Uh, yeah, they're movies that we should be talking about, but we're often not talking about. So, um, yeah, I just got kind of lost in the special features again. I was like, whoa. Uh, this is the last of, this is number 137. This is The Long Ships um, with another, who's the, I'm trying to, Richard Ridmark, Sidney Poitier, Russ Tamblin, for all you uh, Russ Tamblin fans, any Al Adamson fans out there watching this episode. Um Directed by Jack Cardiff. All right, so here's the front, which is beautiful. There's the rear artwork, and get ready for it. Oh, yeah. And I'll show you the inside. Is that the MacGuffin Bell? <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it, the MacGuffin Bell for this movie. Uh, as always, great, great special features here. Uh, New, 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 new. It's a four, one, two, three, four, five new special features. Audio commentary, interviews, film critic Kim Newman on the long ships. I can listen to Kim Newman talk all day about like, he just branch out into like his favorite recipes and stuff. I, I would watch that. Um, let's fill in one gap. Earlier, we, I've covered every imprint release to date with a star by it. Let's fill that star. Let's knock that star off. Cutter's Way has finally arrived for me. This is from a couple of months ago and uh, I had the entire wave uh, minus Cutter's Way. So I'm back up to date with every imprint title to date. All 137 with Cutter's Way, which is a great movie. So Jeff Bridges, who, let me remember myself. Remember myself? Jeff Bridges, John Hurd, uh, Lisa Eichhorn, uh, directed by Ivan Passer, 1981. Um, earlier Jeff Bridges, great Jeff Bridges. And I'll show you, here, I'll hold that up and we'll do that right there. And I'll show you the inside. Wonderful. So happy to be complete once again on my imprints. Uh, not just my imprint collection, but the imprint covers. This is important to me to be as thorough as possible because I know a lot of you guys watch these videos and you want to see this stuff before you spend your hard-earned money on it. And I want to be the guy that you watch to make up your mind about what, you, what you're what you buying. Uh, I, I really, so much of our audience for, the, for these videos is in Australia, but it's not just Australia because of course, other people can buy these things because they're not region locked. So uh, these videos, like I take it very seriously. I, I want to be as complete as possible. 
let's talk about TV on DVD. Guess what, guys? Imprint, not Imprint, Viavision has just released Wanted, Dead or Alive, the complete series. Now, my American brethren will remember that Mill Creek Entertainment put this out some years back. Uh, and that is out of print now, as far as I know. But every that has, it has like a lot of special features. Everything that was on that edition is included here as well. So there's a ton of stuff here. First of all, I like the way they've done this. Uh, it's two separate cases. Each of these has, I think, six discs each in inside. Uh, transfer wise, kind of th these come from from what I can tell my eye. These come from videotape masters. These are it's a fifty what year nineteen fifty eight to nineteen sixty. And uh, yeah, so Wanted Dead or Alive was a big inspiration on Quentin Tarantino for the Bounty Law show within a, the show within a movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had uh, uh, the Bounty Law show that Leonardo DiCaprio's character starred on. Uh, Wanted Dead or Alive was a huge inspiration on that. Not the only inspiration, but probably the most obvious. And even the, the parallels of the career, like Steve McQueen becomes a big star, show ends, and he goes on to this huge movie career, and then... It's very interesting. Like, he was basing it on a lot of people. But so anyway, um, I want to make sure that I'm telling you guys everything here. So it's in NTSC. You should know that it's not in PAL. It's in NTSC. It's black and white. Five featurettes: The Art of the Replica, The Mayor's Leg, Reckless, The Women of Wanted, Dead or Alive, Winchester, A Weapon of Legend. Four colorized episodes. Which, if you're like me, you don't mess with colorized stuff. But maybe you do. If you do, let me know. I'm a purist. I like movies and TV shows in their original, in their original aspect ratio, and uh, in their original presentation. So black and white. Please don't colorize it. I think black and white is beautiful. Someone asked me. Actually, not someone. Multiple people have asked me this question. Like, how do I feel about black bars for shows that were shot in four by three, square frame TV shows? They're like, shouldn't they do something like? Original aspect ratio. Don't mess with the aspect ratio. I can handle black bars. I can handle black bars on the side of the screen. Um, don't crop. Don't zoom. Just put it put it out like it's supposed to be seen. Um, the Martin poster, the favor, six up to. I'm just reading things now. Photo gallery, uh, dead or alive comic book, feature length film, the Great St. Louis Bank Robbery, starring Steve McQueen, Crayon Denton, and David Clark. It's all here in this box set. So if you uh, PSA, public service announcement for Australia, but for anybody else that may have missed that and wants to add that to their collection, I'm so happy that it's back in print. Stingray, Jerry Anderson's Stingray. Uh, I was just saying, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. My apologies to Sylvia Anderson. Um, they have been putting out a ton of, well, not a ton, but they've been putting out a lot of uh, Jerry Anderson stuff in Australia lately. And in fact, there's the... Fireball XL5, Captain Scarlet, and the Mysterions, and Joe 90. Those are all recent. I think all that's 2022. Uh, and now we're adding Stingray to that. It has, now this is PAL. So uh, again, played on my player. I did have some problems with one of the menus, which I guess was probably in PAL, and my player was like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, I do have a region free player that I could have loaded it into, but I didn't need to. The episodes played fine. The menu, the, the episode selection screen loaded up fine. Uh, so we got the entire series of uh, Stingray, and we've also got uh, special features, audio commentary on Stingray, and Stand By for the Action by Jerry Anderson, Still Gallery, Character Biographies, and 21 Audio, TV 20, I'm sorry, TV 21 Audio Adventures. So heavy, heavy, heavy content, lots of stuff there. The complete series with extras, a five disc set. This one blew me away. Uh, Caroline in the City, the complete series. Does anyone else remember this series? I think it was NBC, 1995 to 1999. I did some research on this when Viavision announced this. They, this came out in the U.S. Uh, I guess a while back. Each season is going for about $35. It's a four-season show. And I was like, wow, so it's so cool. I don't think there's a complete series set in the U.S. So Viavision has released this entire series with all four seasons. It's it's uh, it's Leah Thompson. You know, of course, we love Back to the Future. You know, we love Leah Thompson. She's, I want to be respectful here. She's beautiful <laughs> in anything. She's beautiful on this show. She's funny. She's very talented. This is a series about a cartoonist who is working in uh, in the big city, and it's it's like autobiography. You know, it's a sitcom. It's a it's a sitcom. 
videotape again this is sourced from videotape because that's where that's how it was shot so don't come in being like this looks old well it's from 1995 videos this is not a blu-ray remaster or anything like that so uh but for for this guy i am just super happy that the series is available uh and especially in a one complete one and done package here <clears throat> very cool stuff all right last but certainly not least uh this has been a long time in the in the in the making. Late last year, Viavision announced that they were releasing they were releasing Ironside Collection One. This is the first half of the series, seasons one through four. After Perry Mason, uh, Raymond Burr was on Ironside, which is a he's a cop that's been uh, uh, put in a wheelchair. He's been shot in the line of duty and he's in a wheelchair, but he hasn't slowed him down. Grizzled cop in a wheelchair, grumpy, grumpy Raymond Burr, uh, tough, tough Raymond Burr. And uh, I think this is another series that in America has had some sporadic releases. I don't think there's a complete series anywhere. Anyway, this is finally arrived for me. Uh, there was, it, it, I don't, it, it's a crazy story why it took so long, but it's finally here. And guess what else is brand new and is also here is Ironside Collection 2. So the complete series of Ironside, all eight seasons, uh, they're in TSC. Let me verify that with you guys. NTSC Masters. Yep. Uh, they all played perfectly fine for me. Now, the, what's interesting about, let's talk a little more about, a little more about Ironside. So, um, do you know that that so the theme song for Ironside has that sound effect that is in so it's in Quentin Tarantino movies and Kill Bill Kill Bill movies just like that. Now that's later, but so that sound effect was stolen without permission for some kung fu stuff for the Shaw Brothers studio, which I've talked about in my. I'm still working my way through the Shaw Brothers box set and all the kung fu movies that are coming out from. Uh, all the, the all the Shaw Brothers movies that are hitting disc right now, posting kung fu movie reviews like a lot. <laughs> I've reviewed since Christmas time. I think I've reviewed like I don't know 15, 20 kung fu movies. A lot of kung fu movies. I think it was just the one arm boxer that they, anyway. Anyway, that sound effect comes from Ironside. It was used without permission, but it's from Ironside. Uh, so and then a Quentin Tarantino season of the Shaw Brothers movies. He also likes 60s TV as well. Just a, a note, right? Just a pop culture note that, that that sound effect, it started in Ironside. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, head over to YouTube and check out the Ironside opening theme. But there's a lot of stuff here too. We've got the original feature length pilot episode presented in its movie version. So like the hour and a half version. I should also say collection one, the earlier episodes, uh, very clearly good remaster transfers from Universal, from the Universal vaults. But the further you go, they start relying on some tape masters. So like season uh, eight specifically, I know, because I just checked that disc. I'm not there yet with watching it. It's going to take me a few years probably to get through eight seasons of Ironside with everything else that I'm watching. But uh, it looks like they're starting to get into tape masters by the end of that, which is probably understandable. I don't, some people are like, here we go back to our why no Blu-ray, why no 4K conversation. Um, it, the audience, like the remastering Ironside, it's too niche of a show. It's too obscure. It would be too expensive and not enough people would buy it, probably. Um, but I don't know. You vote with your wallet. You vote with your dollars. So if you if enough people pick up Ironside, Collections 1 and 2, maybe it'll get proper remasters in the future. I don't know. Um, but uh, season the Collection 2 has uh, Priest Killer, the 1971 Ironside Sarge crossover. Um, vintage interviews with Raymond Burr, Don Galloway, and Elizabeth Bauer. 1993 reunion TV movie, The Return of Ironside, plus a photo gallery tons and tons of stuff and each one of these weighs a substantial amount my only criticism and this is a small criticism and i hope that this is taken in the spirit that it is intended and not in uh, any sort of um you know i just want to be honest here these are heavy boxes and this is double-sided i'll even show you there's cool stuff inside here too so check it out check it out but so these are double flaps these are double folded cardboard so it's double thick this is just one 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 piece of thin cardboard and it's it's just it's awfully flimsy uh on a shelf it should be okay but like it's i i don't know if there's anything that can easily be done about that i'm sure someone has decided at some point that this is the most effective way to do this but uh i just thought i'd mention it so grateful to have the show but i the box i wish the box was just a little bit thicker for the protection of these cases because it looks 
so sharp. Guys, that's going to do it for this episode. We covered a lot of ground here. I don't know if I can hold up <laughs> iron side again because it's so heavy. I was trying to do like the big, here's what we, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Here's the contents of this episode. Uh, big, big, big stuff happening from ViaVision and Imprint. And I'm so happy to be there covering it and talking about it. And I know you guys are digging Imprint and ViaVision as well. Let me know what you're picking up. What what do you what do you think about these movies? Let's let's talk about the movies. These are super like off the beaten path movies. These are deep cuts that uh, are, again I'm really happy that they're on disc. So let's talk about them. Let's celebrate the movies themselves. And uh, what are your favorites from this haul? We'll, we'll just keep the conversation going. Yes, thank you so much. I should also reference uh, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, we are v- viewer supported and. There are over 100, I think it was 120, maybe the last time I counted, it was 120 exclusive episodes just for Patreon supporters, collection tours, behind the scenes videos, extended interviews. Anytime I talk to a director, I always do a little trimming for the main channel. Just talk to Don Murphy, uh, the producer of the Transformers, Natural Born Killers. Uh, The Patreon episode is 12 minutes longer. He talks about his favorite comic books. He talks about some stories in there that I cut out of the main uh, main channel video. Behind the scenes stuff, early access stuff, the Collecting at Midnight series. We have we're on episode twenty seven of Collecting at Midnight, and uh, that's where it lives at Patreon. Top level support is seven bucks. If you can come over there and hang out with us and support us, please do. We'd really appreciate it. All right, that's the end of this one, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks to Imprint Via Vision. Uh, until next time, I will catch you later.